Hey y'all, Brian here. Let's talk about another new and amazing feature from the Astro 5.0 beta. So in the last video, we talked about the content loader API and the content layer API structure. Today, I wanna to talk about the other stable element that came along, which is the server islands. Server islands allow you to have a static wrapper for all of your main content that you want to be static, you want it rendered from the CDN, you want it lightning fast, and you don't need any personalization, you don't need any server time running, but then allows you to add a, a little teeny bit of, uh, of um, runtime. You, you really want this for things like personalization. You want it for things uh, like up to the minute information, like cart information, or like what we're going to build today, which is a look at doing uh, current weather. So in this example here, we'll get into more in a second. I've got the weather widget. It's a tiny widget. I can you can tell it's super uh, super not important here. Uh, but I've got a current weather, which is my current temperature and humidity, that is running on the server. This runs every single time I reload. You can see the time updates regularly. And then we have this daily area that's going to be. Uh, daily builds, and then all the rest is going to be static, right? So we have daily is static, the entire wrapper and all the content is static, and the only area on here that is going to be dynamically rendered from the server is this current area. So let's take a look at the code and talk about how to actually implement server islands in your project right now. Okay, so here's our project. It is primarily just the default Astro uh, basic project. Usually you'd have this welcome to Astro, it's got the Astro logo in the background, you've got a few different cards down here that you can click on and go to various documentation pages. However, I've added a couple things to this. First and foremost, this is sitting at Astro 5 in the beta, uh, and you do want to be on the beta or at least experimental in uh, the four point something, uh, whatever the latest is at this point. But 5.0 is where server islands did come out. Uh, so what I have here is I also had this component called weather. The weather component is using open Medio, which is an open source meteorological data source. Uh, and it's grabbing a couple small things. Mainly it's getting the daily uh, max and min temperature. And then it's displaying them. You can see here we've got the high and the low set. We're doing it in Fahrenheit because I'm American. Uh, and you can see we're also doing time this ran uh, as new, right? Uh, so you can see this ran at, you know, 1421. And when we're running in dev mode, this is going to be updating every single time we reload the page. It's just the way dev mode works. However, we want the latest data no matter what. Currently, this is all being built statically. This, this weather component and the index page, these are all by default statically built. They are pre-rendered as HTML and sent via the CDN down to the browser. You can see we have this kind of div class banner with the weather component inside of that. So you can see that we do have this feature request where we do want the current temperature as well. Uh, and we have a choice to make now. So in the, the basic functionality of server islands that we're discussing today, really all I'd have to do to have this update every single request is come in and add server colon defer to this weather component. Now, when I save this in this area, in fact, let's go ahead and put a fallback in here as well. So let's have a slash weather and we'll add a div uh, that will say loading. And we'll say that the slot for this, which is a, um, an Astro specific way of inserting content is for fallback. And that's where the server stuff is going to be running. So now you can see when we refresh the page, I get that fallback, which is really waiting for the server to respond. Uh, it's all there, it's waiting. But the thing about that is, the only thing we need to be dynamic is the current weather. The high and the low for the day in the data don't change. So really, I don't think I want to render this weather component as an always server runtime, right? I want, I want to bring as little in as possible. I want to ship as much in this request as possible. And I want my page to jump as little as possible and all these different things, right? I want, I want to kind of have this be the smallest area I can be to make this idea of islands really work. And you have to remember, even though we're calling this a server island, it's really just a client island where we get a server function for free and we can write that server function with our regular Astro components, all of which 
It is super amazing. And honestly, I like this for a lot of things better than having to like write a full React component to get some of the React juiciness on, on some of that. Um, so we want to have current. So let's get rid of server defer. And let's also go back to just having this be a self-closing uh, tag here, self-closing component, save that in, and now it no longer loads that way. So now what we want to do is we want to have a current weather area as well. So we want to replace we want current with another component that we can render from the server. Now I can do this in a few different ways, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a current conditions component, and we're gonna want this to be server defer and we will have it actually also render a fallback. We'll do that same kind of loading idea here. So div slot equals fallback. And then inside here, we'll just say loading, right? And you can put a nice little spinner in here. You can do all sorts of really nice stuff. You can see we're breaking. We don't have that component yet. So let's create that component real fast. Come into our components, new file called current conditions.astro. And then we're gonna bring some of what we already had from here, right? We don't want to reinvent this wheel from scratch. We do need a slightly different uh, weather API call. Uh, we only want to get what we have to, so we pass it a latitude and a longitude, and that's my current location. And then I'm saying I want it in Fahrenheit, and I want uh, the current temperature and current humidity. And then from there, I'm going to destructure, and it won't be daily, it'll be current off of that. And then we need the temperature temperature 2m, which is at the two meter above sea level. And we also need the, uh, what's it called? Let me look off the side. Relative humidity 2m off of not daily, we want it off of current. So that's gonna give us the variables we need to render the current information. And then we also need to have a display. So in this case, we'll come in, add current temp, temperature 2m, and current humidity, relative humidity 2M. And then also the time this ran. Uh, current conditions is not defined, uh, which means I probably, yep, didn't actually import it. So we will import current conditions from uh, the current conditions.astro. Save that. And now you can see that we are getting the current conditions and it is being rendered at this time. But this isn't kind of proving that this is running in the way that we expect it to. So I do wanna talk a little bit, instead of running as npm run dev, I'm gonna npm run build first, and then I'm gonna run npm run preview. And that's going to allow this to run as a preview. I'm using the node um, um, package just to have a standard node uh, runtime here. And so you can see it's now listening on the same port, which is nice. So I'm gonna refresh and you can see we are getting that loading popping in there. And you can see that the time this ran is at 14.2708, whereas this other one is 14.2653. And that's because we're building everything else as a static shell around this one tiny bit of dynamic information. And to kind of talk through this a little bit more, let's open up our dist. And you can see the way this is being split up. And this, this works this way for the node um, server uh, component or the node server adapter uh, in Vercel or Cloudflare or Netlify, it's all gonna work differently. And in fact, I kind of tried this with Netlify. I don't think the Netlify adapter is ready for this yet, but that's neither here nor there. So in the client, when we come in, we take a look at the index. Let's hide this again. You can see that we're doing a few different things, right? We're awaiting that server islands, current conditions. Uh, and you can see, let's, uh, let's format this real fast so we can see it format document. So it's got all of our information, including the CSS here. Let's get rid of the terminal so we can see better. And then we come down here and we've got uh, the H1, welcome to Astro. And then we've got our banner that has our weather inside of it. See weather, current, and then you see that loading, right? And it's trying to then also fetch current conditions, right? All that's happening cross origin. All this is automatically built in, right? Uh, and then it's doing all of the data placement as well. So when this happens, it's gonna find my script and it's going to then uh, replace all the contents, right? There's all sorts of stuff that, again, I didn't write any of this, it's all default. And then you can come down here, you can see the HTML that's generated uh, in my build step as well. So that's on the client side of things. 
When we close that, go back in, let's take a look at the server real fast. So we have our pages as usual, right? We've got this kind of module here for, uh, for the index, but we also have chunks. This is where a lot of the, the server-side JavaScript is being rendered, and we can see here there's the current conditions. Current conditions, let's close the sidebar again, you can see it's a lot like what we defined, but slightly different, right? So we are doing that const, where we're doing the fetch, we're getting the current, we're destructuring it, we're getting the, the temperature and the humidity, and then it's returning this render template. Again, all done automatically by Astro, and render template is going to take a look at the template inside of the main part of the Astro document, and it's going to basically build that HTML and send that HTML down the pipe, down into the client, and the client is ready to accept it. So instead of having to write a client-side component, and then that, that fetches the data, it builds it all on the client side. This is happening on the server and sending the HTML down, and it's all kind of streamlined for us. You can see there's a lot of things that I you know, wouldn't have written as a human uh, that just kind of works for us here. And you can see that, in fact, a lot of the stuff we have in the template is just here and ready to go. And that's it's, it's using the render template, which takes the small Astro renderer and makes everything happen here. So a lot of really interesting things happening behind the scenes as well uh, to make all this work for you. So there's a lot of different applications that you can take a look at. You could use this for cart information. You could use this for users. You could use this for anything that you need to fetch data from the server and you don't want to necessarily write all this for the client. Uh, and it allows you to have really a promise of this hybrid methodology, right? I want as much HTML coming down uh, in that initial page load as possible. And then I want to insert little pieces of dynamic content. Works really well for related content, personalized content. Uh, in this case, content that needs to be semi up to the minute. Uh, in fact, the weather is only a it's on a 15 minute delay on the, on the service that I'm using. Uh, but I could definitely see like current inventory being a thing, like only five left, only four left, only three left, that sort of idea. Uh, and as you can see, as we keep refreshing, this uh, timer keeps ticking up, 1431.09, and our static generation stays static. So again, all that static is happening from the CDN, it's lightning fast, and then even if we have a cold start on our serverless functionality, on our serverless function for this, it's only that one little bit that's the problem. Uh, in fact, there was actually a really great, uh, uh, Theo uh, did a, a really great video explaining uh, the differences between Astro Server Islands and uh, Next's uh, partial pre-rendering. And both have their uses. Both are actually really important additions to the ecosystem. I'll post a link down below uh, to that video because he diagrammed it out really nicely. I think it's a great explanation of when you'd use both, uh, as well as the differences between both, which I'm not necessarily qualified to say. Qualified to teach the implementation, not necessarily the person you want teaching how, uh, how these functions work behind the scenes. However, I think this is a really interesting piece of functionality. I think everyone should be playing around with it right now. And we'll get, I believe, the 5.0 stable uh, later this year or super early 2025. Um, and I'm really looking forward to kind of using this for a lot of different pieces of functionality. I think it's a really cool uh, marriage of server side and, uh, and static. And I really like Astro's philosophy on all of this. So take it. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments. Uh, and until next time, I hope you keep doing amazing things on the web. Thanks so much.